the truth is understood experientially. I, I somebody wrote recently, you know, we have an ideological war in the church today. It's not, it's not true at all. There's no ideological war in the church today. There's a falling away from or drawing close to the person of Christ. That's what's going on in the church today. And it's always it's always been going on since Judas, yeah. you know, and the and the 12 apostles. So our how do we the question is to acquire the orthodox phony by the mind of Christ, we draw near to Christ. And how do we do that? We draw near to somebody who is Christ in our day. Like in every age, Christ is living through and in his saints and his disciples. He said that as much. He said in many ways that I will be, I will be with you. And and I will guide you, and the Holy Spirit will come and abide in you, and you will. And if they heard hear me, they'll hear you, and you will have the power to bind and loose, and all this. He does. This is what many Protestants. I see this in the comments under our videos. They do not understand this. It's very strange, but they act like and they say, "No saints, don't follow saints, don't listen to saints," as if there's a as a, a a chasm between the saints and Christ. Christ himself organized and arranged for everything to work in and through his disciples. That's how he wanted his presence to be in the world. He wanted the body of Christ from Pentecost on to be his presence in the world. So you cannot make that separation at all. And that goes all the way down to the question of acquiring the phronema, acquiring a spiritual father, and being guided by a good spiritual father. Now, that's a minefield today. Because we have heresies in the church today, we have we have a, uh, we have many struggles today with the various isms, from philatism to secularism to ecumenism, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, perennialism, and we can go on and on and on. So many, <laughs> right? So the challenges are many, and you have to you have to uh, choose why. It's a challenge for the young convert to really. It's a minefield. You got to be patient. Big virtue today: patience. Patience, 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 and, perver and 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 perseverance to go deeper and acquire the mind. And and I always tell people, you know, run to the saints, run to the saints every day. Do you get up in the morning and you read the life of the saint along with the scriptures? Are you constantly having the saints in front of you? Your examples? Are you are you a student of the saints? And I mean the saints of our day, like the last hundred years, especially. We should be reading the lives lives of Saint Siloan and Saint Joseph the Hesychist and Saint Paisos and Porfirios and Gabriel and Justin Popovich and Nikolai Vilimirovich and all these great, great saints that God gave us in the 20th century. They're, they should be our first, we should be students of these saints today. Then we can become, start to become students of the saints of the, of the earlier days and the ancient church. Only through the contemporary saints can we really reach them because God gave us these saints for us to guide us. They uh, they speak to our particular problems and, and difficulties, and and we have to follow the Holy Fathers in our day. When they say uh, in the in the Ecumenical Council, they said "Ipomenis saigias patrasi," following the Holy Fathers. Then they and they began the, the the decree of the Ecumenical Council. Right, mm. this was always been from the very earliest times of the church. The phronema of the church is that we follow the Holy Fathers. That's what that's what it means to be. Christian, Catholic, Orthodox, that's what it means. You cannot be if you're not. See how important it is this, this idea, the incarnation is through time and space. It comes down to us. And we have to be in that stream of holy tradition and holy fathers if we're going to be disciples of Christ, therefore, in his body. We're going to be participants in this mystery of the incarnation. We have to be followers of the holy fathers. But that, if you looked at that and you, you in the fourth century, the fifth century, when the uh, Chalcedon, they didn't just mean the fathers of the first century, the second century, the third century. They meant the fathers that were alive that day. When we say at the end of the divine liturgy, through the prayers of the Holy Fathers of Jesus Christ, we don't mean the fathers of the 20th century. We're in the 21st now. Or the 19th. We mean the fathers today. And actually, it's from the monastery. And this, the abbot or the priest would say, through the prayers of the Holy Fathers, he means the monks of the monastery. Hmm. He's not referring to the, some other... The orthodoxy is right now, right here in time and space, the, the, the elders, the spiritual fathers, the guides. That's why there's a very, I, I see this chasm opening up among some orthodox, like don't follow the elders and saints of our days. You hear this and it's just bizarre. It's like, whoa, this is not orthodox, right? How, where do they get this stuff? You know, no, the authorities are the academic theologians. Uh, you know, I just want to say, if you know Greek, like God help us. 
if that's <laughs> our, our authorities in the Orthodox Church. Never been the, never been the case. We've never, ever, ever had academic theologians as our authorities. We that haven't even had true. academic theology as a part of the church. Where, where do they get this? This is this is a new fruit, 20th century, 19th century fruit of westernization, Latinization. We follow the Holy Father. So if you're going to acquire the mind of the technician that you're studying under, right? I mean, you're going to acquire that mind. You're going to become a good, you know, master uh, woodworker. You're going to you're going to in part acquire the mind of the master of that trade that you're learning under. It's not going to be like a book you read. It's got to be in orthodoxy, at least the, the spirit of God and the, the church is a, a, a reality right now in time. So you have to be a part of that reality. and You have to be under the guidance of those who are proven as guides. So, for instance, when you go to Mount Athos, you know, when and back in the day in the, in the 80s and early 90s, when I remember this expression. I love this expression by St. Paisos. He was talking about the uh, elders of Manathos, the abbots of Manathos. And he said, well, there are, because I, I know this abbot personally. And, and in fact, he, he baptized me. This is, he says, uh, he says, there are many abbots of Manathos, but there's only one Parthenios. And he's talking about elder Parthenios of, of St. Paul's monastery. So even on Athos, you see that there, the saints say, I mean, he was just being loving toward this great and holy uh, abbot of St. Paul's, who's now mm -hmm. in his 90s. He's uh, 50 years an abbot of St. Paul's Monastery, oh, wow. great, great holy elder on Manathos. My point in bringing this up is, even on Athos, they say, you know, they point out the exceptional fathers of their day, and they seek to follow them, right? And St. Paisus went to Athos, and he sought out all the virtuous ones, and he sought to learn from them, and he went and learned from them, and he wrote a book. Athenite Fathers and Athenite Matters, which you, you can read in English. And he's going through and he's listing all these great, you know, elders. He wanted to, to not only be at their feet, but he wanted everybody else in the monastic environment in his day to be at their feet, to learn from them. This is just the way it is. This is the, this is the nature of the body, right? So we all, and here's another thing I want to say. And this is going to be a little controversial. Even the bishops have to sit at their feet. I agree. <laughs> Even the bishops have to sit at the feet of the saints of our day. If you're going to be a good priest and a good bishop, you better be a disciple of today's saints. If you think you don't need to, you're going to be deluded. And even if you're a bishop, you'll fall into delusion. There are not except, there's no exceptions in this rule. Every, every great uh, elder will have a, a, you know, for the most part, there are always exceptions to rules, but as a rule, they have a great elder that they learn from. You know, Saint Elder Ephraim sat at the feet of Saint Joseph the Hesychist, and and yes. you know, so it, it, that's the rule. There are exceptions. Saint Joseph went to Saint Daniel of Katonakia, but he largely was a exceptional a struggler and had such determination that God gave him many many spiritual gifts. But the the rule is we learn from somebody. So I, it's a long answer, but the basic answer is that's a big part of acquiring the Orthodox Fronty. It's a very big part. And I think Saint Athanasius said as well, like the saints are our candles in our world, in our life. Yes. You know, we can get guided to their lights. And I see too many people nowadays looking at orthodoxy and looking at the church and thinking about it like it's something of the past. It's the oldest, you know, we have to look only at, at the oldest source materials there are. But then they forget that there's indeed saints walking among us right now on this earth in this in this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the great treasure. I think that's the greatest treasure orthodoxy gives us. It's not what not the saints of the fourth or fifth or tenth century, but the ones that are alive today. It, this is the proof of the truth of the church. I wrote in the uh, the preface to the life of St. Paisios, I wrote that, you know, we don't need any aggiornamento of, of of Vatican II. We don't need mm -hmm. any updating. We don't need a reformation, constant reformation. They talk about it on the process. We don't need any of that because we we never lost it. We never have to. We don't go back to something we have. We don't need to recover something we lost. We don't need to reform something that's that's ever present and always true. And so you know that's the great. That's if if that doesn't exist in orthodoxy, then we are just like the heterodox, and we are just going back and 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 mining the quotes from the fathers and trying to recover what was lost in the early church. This is the great treasure of orthodoxy. That today we have 
the same apostolic experience from the Acts of the Apostles. We have that. When you read the Acts of the Apostles and you read St. Paisios, it's the same life. I'm still on 